Let's talk about cross the cross island stakeholder um, a meeting. Um, as you can see, the, the, the date there says June 15th. The June 15th date was from our official stakeholder meeting. Um, does anybody not know where Cross Island is in Dockyard? Cross Island and Dockyard, right as you go to the, to the, to the two pillars, um, as you go into Dockyard proper, just, just you know where the two cement silos are? Directly in front of there, count 1,000, 2,000, that land has been filled in. That is Cross Island. And that is the land where we believe there lies nine acres of opportunity. Before I go in to talk about the opportunity proper, what we are trying to do with this process, gentlemen, and what I'm trying to get from you tonight, um, and if you can give me a count of how many people we have in the room, uh, we're trying to excite everyone about a development that's taking place in Bermuda. We're trying to get ideas. We're trying to get people to share with their vision for taking our country to the next level. Um, often and without getting political at all, oftentimes we have people with very brilliant ideas, but politics stemmies or limits the length and the breadth of the discussion. We believe that this is an opportunity for us as a country to take our lovely home to the next level with some development, uh, with some investment, with some opportunity for jobs. And so ultimately, we believe it's the ideas from the men in this room, a brilliant idea that is going to allow us to build on it, to get investment, to get development, and to put our island back to work. So that's a, uh, a brief of it. I'm going to go through a welcome which you've just done, talk about the committee, the history, our approach, how you can submit the ideas, how they will be evaluated, how you can get involved, and then we have the question, the question and answer. The Cross Island Committee was established by Redco. Redco wanted to uh, work on this nine acres in Dockyard, but they wanted a committee that could be bi bipartisan, a committee that could be independent, a committee that can be, uh, uh, without much encumbrance, start to look at this opportunity and make decisions and give them some, some ideas to going forward. And so they formed um, this, our committee, the, legacy, the Cross Island Legacy Committee, and we were looking at uh, what we can do with the nine acres of land. The committee's aim is to select an idea that is viable, that is sustainable and that ultimately creates a positive leg legacy for Dockyard and for Bermuda in general. We see this as an exciting opportunity for all residents to get involved. In other words, when you think of all the other developments that we have on tap, on tap and that people are involved with, Mr. and Mrs. Bermuda, we'll call them Mr. Fogo and Mrs. Fogo, they say, I didn't know anything about the product, about the process. No one discussed with me the opportunity. Where is the money coming from? What are the rubrics centered around this? We wanted this process to be transparent. We want it to be, to be done in, in the public. And we wanted everyone in Bermuda to submit an idea. We wanted to get the nexus, the opportunity, the, the rubric of this, we want this to come from the people of Bermuda. In other words, whatever happens in Dockyard, we want the people in Bermuda to have a say in the direction that, that it goes. The committee, um, you would know the second person, there you see him in the room, Mr. Andy Burrows. He's the Chief Investment Officer for the Bermuda Tourism Authority. He is on our board. Aideen Rattery Price, she's the Director of the Department of Planning. Kirk Otterbridge, he works for the Department of Works and Engineering. Joanna Cranfield, she's the, the manager for Redco. Philip Seaman, he's an architect, he's representing PJ Design and the board. We have Elena Strong, she is a, uh, an assistant curator at the Bermuda National Museum. She deals with uh, at the sacred spaces that we have in Dockyard, making sure we cover that. And we have Jonathan Starling. Jonathan Starling represents Green Rock, and that is the environmental uh, backbone of, of, of our board. And so what we try to do, we try to, and we have uh, Reese. Reese. Reese Fletcher, thank you. Reese Fletcher, he represents um, the America's Cup team. He sits on as an ex-officio member. And so we've tried to get a diverse team of a cross-section of Bermuda, people with uh, different areas of expertise, and so we're looking to use those expertise to make a collective decision. Let's give you a bit of a background. So oftentimes when you have an idea, people are not willing to discuss or talk about the opportunity. This idea was first discussed and approved in 2009. They wanted to make it a boatyard, they wanted to make it a marine college, and they wanted to bring marine and ports to this location. It was approved. Best looked at it and Best said, you have not done the necessary environmental impact studies. And so 
they looked at this as not having done the, the necessary due diligence. So Redco agreed the plan for it to be possibly a boatyard, for it to be a marine shipping college, and for also to be move marine and ports to this location. Best challenged them on the location and said they had not done the necessary environmental impacts um, surveys and they put the idea uh, to the side. As everyone knows, most recently, we have had some activity for the America's Cup, and we looked at an op accident opportunity to house this event and looked at a place to end the event, and so a decision was made uh, uh, to start to do the landfill. The landfill was done, uh, uh, was, was expensed. They have spent, to date, $39 million on the project. This project was underwritten and, the prof and, and backed by the Bermuda government. And, and so that was the, the, the essence or the, the history of, of this land. Originally approved um, in 2009, it was not, the plan didn't go ahead because they had not done the necessary environmental impact studies for this land. Now we're looking, we're saying, if in 2021, excuse me, 2017, the America's Cup, the first leg ends, if we are successful to have it, yes, this will still go ahead, but it would happen in 2021 because we obviously we would like to keep the America's Cup in Bermuda. Is everybody with me thus far? Okay. Well, let's... So, here, here, is, here is how this thing is going to work. We have, and I'm going to jump around, and so once we come in, if I've already discussed it, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go, go, go across it. We have what is called the idea phase. What I feel really passionate about this, let me, and let me tell you why. My grandfather came to Bermuda in 1923. He came to Bermuda from St. Kitts, as many of our family members did. When he came to Bermuda from St. Kitts, he went to Dockyard, and he was a carpenter, and he was integral in, in making Dockyard. And so he tells a story, he told a story, and my father told a story how every day he left Happy Valley in, in Devonshire and rode a push bike to Dockyard every single day and then rode that same push bike home. And so when he, when he talked about Dockyard and the work in Dockyard, when we go to Dockyard, we're really proud of the legacy that my grandfather had in Dockyard. I see this not only as an opportunity for me to make a solid contribution to, to our country generally, but to carry on my grandfather's legacy in, in Dockyard as well. So what we're looking at this phase is, and this is where I want you gentlemen to, to, to go on this journey with me. What I'm trying to get our country to do is to dream. So when you ask me questions, you are programmed to focus on the $39 million debt because that's how you are programmed. And that is right for a certain segment. What I am trying to get our people to do is to dream. I want this to be this, is, this will work well. I want this to work well. So many times we focus on all of the encumbrances or the problems. We have taken the ability away from our people to dream. In the idea phase, what we're saying is, we want to know if you were king for a day, what would you put in Dockyard? We understand the financial piece. We understand what the debt piece is. Let's talk that away for a second. We want Mr. and Mrs. Fogo to give us an idea of what they would like to see there. So in the first phase, what we're going to do is gather all the ideas. No idea is silly. My favorite idea, so every idea counts. Yes, we will, I'll give you the website in a minute. So you say you want to see a chicken shack there. We take your idea. Yes, guess what? We've had just over 100 ideas after I checked today. And 17 of the ideas have been for a water park or an amusement park. My favorite thus far, not because I frequent such an establishment, I saw a very good idea for a brothel. <laughs> yes? And I know no one in this room will frequent such a place, but they had, they, they had, they had, they had uh, an idea for a brothel. Now, I've seen a number of people have a lot of different hotels, um, uh, convention centers, um, agro farming, a marijuana uh, a research facility, a place after plastic surgery you can come and convalesce. So we've seen the length and breadth of different scopes of ideas. However, we want more ideas. So the first phase is the idea phase. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me ideas. After you get the ideas, we formed our committee. We look at the ideas. We have a criteria. The criteria have been, have been settled, and we'll go through them in a minute. Um, is it structurally sound? Does it fit the environment? Um, is, it a financially, um, is it financially stable? Um, what's another one, Andy? Economic. 
is, is it economically viable? And so we've put all of these things down and we've put a percentage beside each and every one of them. After we go through and we mox or synthesize or get those down to um, a, a good idea or five or six good ideas, we take those ideas and we give them to the Redco board. The Redco board look at those ideas based on whatever um, criteria they like. Um, they, they use the same, the same boxes that I just said and then they put those ideas and they vote on those ideas. If they don't like any of the ideas that we've given, they give it back to us and ask us to go back to the public for some more ideas. If they like or choose one, two, three of the ideas, whatever the ideas, those ideas then go to an RFP process. This is public land, that this has to go through a procurement process and there are established protocols in place to go to an RFP. It goes to an RFP and then they're responsible for uh, 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 putting the idea to fruition. So, if your idea is shortlisted, your responsibility then is to do the feasibility of surveys. Your responsibility is to do the environmental impact survey. Your uh, 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 responsibility is to put together the business plan. That is in the phase if you're choosing for the RFP, after the RFP process. But in this phase that we are in, that started on the 15th of June, which ends on the 31st of July, yes? That whole phase is just we want ideas from the public. What has this looked like? I, we had uh, stakeholder meetings. This will be considered a stakeholder meeting. We're looking to do four of them in Somerset in the next coming week. We're looking to meet at Chew Stick next week with the youth segment of, of our country. I went on Sherry, Jay, thank you for warning me guys, um, two weeks ago, and they beat the breath out of me on the Sherry Jay show, and I loved it, because we were, we were able to have open dialogue. I was able to see where the people coming from. And, and let me just stay there for a second. When I was on the Sherry J show, what did I learn from that experience that I think that I took back as the chairman of the committee? I listened to Mr. and Mrs. Bermudian, and what they said to me on the Sherry J show was, number one, we want to make sure that this process is transparent the whole way through. In other words, Mr. Keynes, don't come and tell us that you are going to be transparent. We want that to be transparent through to Redco, and we want you guys to do this to the end. The second thing that I got from the conversation, they said, how do I, if I have a good idea, how do you guys help me put together a team, a plan, a financial, a financial matrix so I can legitimately um, um, go for business, yes? And so I took that on because you can't go to people and say, listen, I want your input. We live in a community where they're gonna say, I have a knife and fork, I wanna eat some dumplings as well, yes? So our responsibility then, we took that, that uh, those discussions that we had on the radio were in the process of meeting with um, uh, one of the lending agencies as well as uh, 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 the small business lending element in Bermuda and we're going to ask them if they can help put aside some money so if a Bermuda team wants to, wants to be involved this is an opportunity for them to do so. But let's be clear, this is, this is an opportunity that might be bigger than the men in this room but it's not limited to the men in this room. I would like, if you think about nine acres and opportunities, this plot of land can be a number of things. So we want everyone to have the opportunity to think from small to big. Let's not focus on the debt, and we will focus on it. That is a key focus because if you have $39 million, you need something that's financially viable. You need something that is, that's economically stable. But guess what we also want to do? We understand the climate that we live in. We understand what we need in Bermuda. We want something that is going to create jobs. But guess what? In Dockyard, we cannot have. We cannot have something. It's a marine town. It is a historic town. So, so we cannot do something in Dockyard that is not consistent with the aesthetics, with, with the neighborhood. So there's a, there are a lot of things that you have to consider when you're doing certain things uh, in Dockyard. But what we also have, we have to be brave. Somebody has to be able to see in Dockyard, and this is where I want the gentleman in this room to go. You have to be able to do something in Bermuda. We, have a very strong reinsurance um, segment in Bermuda because someone was brave, they made the right connections, they did the building, and they built one of the greatest reinsurance uh, 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 countries in the world. We now have to start looking and stop talking about what can we do in Bermuda to bring business to Bermuda, something that is trendy, something that's avant-garde, and that could put our people back to work. So let's talk. If you want to put agro-farming there, you might want to put a hotel there. You might want to put a convention center there. You might want to put um, um, uh, IMAX movie theater there. You might, you know, everything that you think could benefit Bermuda, we need those ideas. Yes? Step one, June 15th to July 31st, 
that is the idea phase. That's where you submit your ideas, yes? The next phase is the evaluation phase. The evaluation phase is we get all of the ideas. The team sits in a room. We have a matrix that we're going to use, and we're going to take all these ideas, and we're going to look at the ideas. We're going to vote them down until we get two or three, maybe four good ideas. We then give the ideas to Redco at the, at the end of August. Redco at the end of August. Redco at the end of August. They're not going to go in another room and, 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 and do anything secret, anything dodgy. They have a, uh, uh, some criteria as well. All of the criteria for the voting are, is going to be made available to the public. So if you go on our Facebook page, you will see all of the criteria that were used. You'll see all of the votes. Um, like how uh, every stakeholder meeting is on the web page, like this one will be on the web page. Why? We want Bermudians to be able to see at every stage of the process, we open this up to the general public. And so when we show the stake, the our stakeholder meeting, we will show this meeting tonight and people will be able to see the message has been consistent, the message, message has been one that of being transparent. So let's look at the pillars that we're going to, let's, going to, let's look at the pillars that we're going to be using. Economic, does it pro provide an economic benefit to Bermuda? Environmental, is it, sur sur uh, excuse me, is it sensitive to the environment and the surrounding historical significance of the marine habitat? Financial, does it deliver a good return on the investment? Is it financially viable? Social and cultural, is it connection connected to Bermuda's heritage and culture? Does it provide social benefits to Bermuda? Three, excuse me, the last one, is it a good fit for the location, physical, exposure to weather and the elements? So last night, I was looking at Burn News, and I was reading the comments on the press release that I gave, and we went right back into that which we are good at, into the Bermudian naysaying and, and, and Mr. and Mrs. Skeptic, and it's healthy to do so. So on, on the Burn News article last night, the, the, the pieces afterwards, they were having a huge discourse on the fact that it is low to the ground and that we get hurricanes and that it's going to be destroyed by the hurricane. <laughs> yes? I can walk down the street and get hit by the bus, but I'm still going to walk down the street because I go walking every day. That's what I do. We have an opportunity in Bermuda, to those points specifically, we have an opportunity in Bermuda to give ideas. Yes? Our responsibility at this stage is to give us ideas. I can speak frankly to this body of men and a lovely woman. We have to be in our culture and we have to be willing to think outside of the box. When you submit an idea, we want to be in a room and we want to consider from the fantastic to the absurd. We believe that's in the middle, that's where we're going to get something phenomenal. We believe that we want something that is $39 million to, rep to repay. It has to be something that financially makes sense. So you cannot tell me a dog park. I can incorporate a dog park into one of the elements, but in the back of our mind, when we go to consider and weigh this, guys, as much as I love dogs and I am a dog lover, I know that it cannot be a huge dog park because it's not going to raise $39 million. To Mr. and Mrs. Bermudian, who want everybody from Bermuda to be employed, of course we have to consider that. And I would love to put two of my friends together and put together something financially, but one of the things we w might want to do might cost $150 million. So we might need investment from abroad. And so what this brings to the forbearance that the men in this room have to leverage, if you want to be a part of the equity stake in this, you have to leverage contacts that you have outside of Bermuda. And whatever that looks like, that is a matter for your team. Will this be opportunity for Mr. and Ms. Um, smaller Bermudians? We're talking about nine acres. It is an opportunity for everyone to put in a stake. The next question that we had was, how do I get financially compensated for my idea? My daughter comes to the table and she asks me, Daddy, can we go to Disney World? And I say, what? No, we went two years ago. That doesn't mean that our idea is not valid. And if I say we do go to Disney World, that doesn't mean she gets a free ticket. That means you have given your old man a very good idea that was considered, yes? And so the, a, a big part of the, the conversation was um, how do people get compensated for the idea? There is no direct compensation for the idea. The idea after you submit it belongs to um, the Redco board for lack of a better term. But we're gonna use every idea when it comes back in the RFP phase. If you have an idea and you have proprietary information, you don't give it at the idea phase, at the RFP phase if you are indeed contacted. That's when you go into the proprietary information. You put your um, plan together and submit your team.
So forms can be submitted. So you can, the submission process is very easy. Someone can go on Cross Island at Deloitte.com, Cross Island at Deloitte.com, and um, just fill out the form on Deloitte, put your ID on Del at Deloitte at Cross Island.com, or you can go on Cross Island Bermuda Facebook page, or you can pick up a form at any one of the post offices and then drop it off back at any one of the post offices. All the post offices on the island. So if you want to pick up a form, you go to the, to the post office, pick up a form, fill it out, put it back in. You can go on Cross Island at Deloitte.com or you can go onto our Facebook page and get the form on the face Facebook page. In order for this process to be transparent, the Redco Board have uh, commissioned Deloitte Deloitte are the partners that are managing this process. So Deloitte act as the project managers over the entire process. They are leading the charge. They do all the heavy lifting um, with reference to this opportunity. So the Redco board, for all intents and purposes, they do not have their DNA on any part of this process. They only get involved at the, at the RFP phase. However, and this is what I want to make clear, even at the RFP phase, it will be transparent and they will have a specific criteria that they use to um, how, how they come to their, to their number. To live on our island, I find it to be a challenge because in order for us to change the direction or the trajectory that our country is going in, we have to change the way the conversations that we have privately, we have to change the way we dialogue with each other publicly. In order to do that, we have to be willing to disagree, to have different uh, viewpoints and different perspectives. I think what I like more about this than anything is the ability for us to dream. I like the fact that somebody can say they want a brothel in Dockyard. I love that fact. I disagree with that fact, but guess what? That person has, number one, been brave, they've been fastidious, and they've submitted a form. I like the fact that somebody wants a dog park. I don't see that form. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so, some, somebody wants to see a dog park. I know that that is not financially viable, but I like the fact that they were passionate. We're very cognizant of the environment. And so when, the, one of the reasons why we have Jonathan Starling from Best on the board and, and Elena on the board, when we talk about the environment and, and about Dockyard, listen, we get that we have to preserve our country and that we have to make sure that its history is preserved. But more importantly, not more importantly, in tandem with that, we also have to be Turkish and aggressive in bringing investment to Bermuda and, and bringing opportunity to Bermuda. And so in this entire process, we want to save the environment, but at the same time, we want to do something to bring some work and to bring some opportunities to Bermuda. I believe that our country will be a stronger country when we get a lot more people working. If this were not a legitimate opportunity, I would not have consented to uh, drive this at the, at the, as a chairman of the committee. Gentlemen and, and lady, I believe this is an opportunity for us to do certain some big things in Bermuda. I believe this is an opportunity for us to drive uh, some huge opportunities to Bermuda. What do we need? We need for you to dream, to get some ideas, to, to tell us about the opportunity, to fill out the forms, and to tell people about this. And uh, uh, I believe that this in 10 years, in five years, we will have something thriving, something vibrant in the, in the West End. As a matter of fact, without going, with, and I can't give you this detail, some big things, announcements in the next couple months will be happening in Dockyard, yes? And we have some major developments taking place in Bermuda in, in, the, in, the, in the Western End. And I think this will be uh, 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 something that will complement a lot of the development that is taking place and opportunities coming to Bermuda.